Hello everyone, welcome again. So today we'll be talking about the energy module of the Year 11 Chemistry Syllabus. And in particular, this lesson will talk about hydrocarbon nomenclature, or in essence naming hydrocarbons. Okay? Because if we have different names for different hydrocarbons, of course, if everyone uses a different naming system, then of course everyone gets confused. So the whole idea of this lesson is to teach you the correct way of naming things that's accepted around the world. Okay? So here we just have a simple uh, or very typical um, hydrocarbon refinery. And as you can see, it's quite complex. And the reason is because there are so many chemicals that are being dealt with and so many processes. And of course, chemists need to be able to communicate what these different chemicals are, as well as what these processes are doing. So that's the focus of today's lesson. So hydrocarbons, HC, are compounds that obviously just contain hydrogen and carbon. Okay? So here's a, a group of them. We have methane, propane, ethane, and butane. And again, we'll talk about how we name these later on. But that's all we're talking about here, just hydrogen and carbon. So there are three types, allophactic, allocyclic, and aromatic. Okay? Um, in this course, we'll be concentrating on the allophatic type. Okay? So allophatic hydrocarbons, HC, remember, are straight or branched, and they don't have any um, circles or rings. So we're likely to see something like this, but not something like that. Okay? So we're not likely to see any circles or cycles. Um, that would be more like the aromatic group of hydrocarbons. Okay? So within this aliphatic group, there are again another subdivision, and we call and there are three types. There are alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Okay? And I'll talk about what they are in a second. But just know that there are three for now. Okay? So alkanes firstly. What are alkanes? They're straight chained or branched compounds. So by branched, I mean if each line represents a carbon chain, a branch would be you know, an offshoot of the main, um, the main chain. And so branch just means branched like in a tree. So it, they all mean the same thing. So that's what branched compounds are. And it contains only single bonds. So there are no double bonds or no triple bonds in an alkane structure. It's just single bonds, carbon bonded to carbon or carbon bonded to hydrogen. Okay? They're sometimes called saturated hydrocarbons. So I know when we talk about food, we talk about saturated fats and unsaturated fats. But the reason the naming system is consistent in food, but it's also the same in this hydrocarbon naming. So saturated, all it means is that there's the maximum number of hydrogen bonded to the carbon chain. So because there are no double bonds, it means that each carbon can essentially combine with four other chemicals. And so you get the maximum number of carbon out of that, rather than if you had a double bond where there would be one, carbon, one hydrogen less um, compared to the alkane. Okay? So saturated meaning it has the most hydrogen that can fit on the carbon chain. Um, it's a bit of an older type of naming system, but sometimes people still refer to them this way. Um, they are sometimes called paraffins. Um, so if a lot of Americans still call it paraffin. Um, and many older um, scientists call it paraffins. But we should just call them alkanes for the purposes of our studies, OK? Alkanes. To name these compounds, we use a prefix or stem system. And the prefix is given by the number of carbons in the chain. So if you have a five carbon long chain, we have pentane. If you have a six carbon long hex, two eth, and so the table is here for you. Now the suffix is ane. So as soon as we know it's an alkane, we, o we only see single bonds. We just figure out how long the carbon chain is and then just add ane to the end. So two carbons long would be eth ane. Simple. And again, two carbon atoms, ethane. So alkenes, the reason why I have this fruit here, it's quite puzzling, but alkenes, uh, a particular type of alkene called ethene is used as a growth, uh, a fruit ripening hormone in plants. 
So when we want fruits to ripen, we sometimes spray them with ethane and it forces them to ripen a little bit faster. So that's why we have our not ripe tomato here. So alkenes are straight chained or branched compounds similar to alkanes, but they have one or more double bonds. So you see here we have C with two bonds to another C. So that's what separates them from the alkanes, that double bond there. Now because that double bond stops the maximum number of hydrogens bonding to it, we call them unsaturated. Okay? And again, in that older type of naming system, they are sometimes called olefins. Now, the stem or prefix structure is the same based on the number of carbons, but the suffix will now be ene. So C2H4 is called ethene, so two carbons, but we know it's an alkene because there's less hydrogen than what we expect, then we call it ethene, right? For alkenes of four or more, so four more carbon, so from but upwards, we have what's called carbon or isomerism, okay? So because the bond can be between any of the four carbon atoms, while we have the same chemical compound, the same chemical, uh, the same chemical composition, because the double bond is in different places, that means that we have different chemicals. So for instance, this chemical is different to this one. Okay? So just because the double bond is moved one step over, we get a completely different chemical. Or not completely different, but, at, but chemically they will be different to one another. So that's what we mean by isomerism that even though we have the same chemical composition, we have different chemical structures, so we have different chemical properties. Okay? Now it is the place, its placement, so the double bond placement has implications for the properties of that alkene, as I just mentioned. Okay? Alkynes, so now we've moved from alkane to alkene, now we're at alkyne. We have our nice little acetylene torch for those who do metalwork or something like that. Now, we call it an oxyacetylene torch, and the fuel is obviously an alkyne. So an alkyne is a straight chain or branch compound that has one or more triple bond. So instead of a double or a single bond, we have triple in this case, so C with three bonds. Again, they're unsaturated because this triple bond stops the maximum number of carbons attaching to it, uh, hydrogen, sorry, attaching to it. And again, older naming structure, we sometimes call alkynes acetylenes, so oxyacetylene torch. There you go, that's why it's called that, even though it has an alkene fuel, because alkenes can sometimes be called acetylene. Again, the same prefix structure, though now the suffix is "-ine". So C2H2 is called ethine, or ethine, right? So that wraps up today's lesson on naming hydrocarbons or hydrocarbon nomenclature. And we spoke about what the different types of hydrocarbons we have. And in particular, we talked about aliphatic hydrocarbons and alkenes, alkanes, and alkynes. Okay? So we'll move on now to the question section. And hopefully, you'll be able to use the things that we just spoke about to answer these questions. So which of the following is true? Alkanes contain one or more double bonds? No, alkanes only contain single bonds. Alkenes contain only single bonds? Again, no, we just said that alkanes only contain single bonds. So alkenes contain at least one or more double bonds. Alkanes contain one or more triple bonds? Again, no, alkanes only contain single bonds. And alkynes contain one or more triple bonds is true. Alkynes have one or more triple bonds, and that's what makes them an alkyne. Okay? So question seven, which of the following can be used as an alternative name for alkanes? So we're remembering that older naming structure, structure, not the SI naming structure, or IUPAC naming structure, sorry. So we have olefins, no. Olefins are used as an alternative for alkenes. Acetylene, no. We spoke about that almost last. That would be used instead of an alkyne. Alkanol, we didn't even speak of alkanol in today's lesson, but it's the name used for alcohol groups, like ethanol and things like that. 
So again, that's not true. So B, paraffins is correct. Paraffins is often substituted for alkane. Okay. So what is the name of a chemical that has only single bonds and four carbon in its chain? Okay. So only single, uh, so four carbons gives you butte. Remembering that table, um, it tells you all of the prefixes that you need. Four carbons would be butte. It has only single bonds. So the suffix is, of course, ane. And so the final answer is butane. Simple enough. What is the name of a chemical that has one double bond and two carbons in its chain? So same thing again. We'll try and break it down the same way. It's called ethene, but the reason we have it is two carbons is eth, and the double bond means that it's an ene, so it must be ethene. Okay. Uh, sometimes ethene is also called ethylene. Again, um, different naming conventions that's been used over the time, but they're the same chemical, ethene and ethylene. So lastly, let's name this chemical. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is count the carbons. One, two, three, four. So there are four carbons, which means that it's but. Okay. Now, looking at the bond structure, there's one double bond here, which means that it must be an ene group. So there's a double bond, so there must be ene at the end. And it's on the second carbon, so there must be a two in front of the name because it tells you where the double bond is. The second carbon, or the third carbon, or the first carbon. So it's at the second carbon. So we have two propene. Okay, so that wraps up today's lesson on nomenclature of hydrocarbons. So we learned what the different hydrocarbons are and how we name them, as well as we learned mainly about the aliphatic hydrocarbons and the three types within them, the alkane, the alkene, and the alkyne. So those three are the ones that we'll concentrate on, and so hopefully you've learned how to name them correctly when you see them. So the next lesson will be on hydrocarbons, again, with a respect to... Um, naming them in naming different let's several uh, different levels of hydrocarbons or more complex hydrocarbons. So I look forward to seeing you at the next lesson. Mm -hmm.